Hi, I'm Sam Fesich from the EduMagic Podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Coming up on episode 210 of House of Ed Tech, I'm going to make a recommendation about how to learn a new language. I'm going to talk about a couple of big events coming up, and we're going to talk about the importance of digital equity. Strike up the band. Welcome to the House of Ed Tech. My name is Chris Nessie. The House of Ed Tech launched in 2014, giving me the opportunity to speak with teachers, leaders, and creators so you can more effectively integrate technology, strengthen your pedagogy, and have more confidence in your classroom and school so you can make an impact. Get involved with the podcast by visiting my website, chrisnessy.com. Using technology isn't difficult, and this is where it begins. This is the House of EdTech. And if you're a first-time listener, welcome to the House of EdTech. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. Glad you're here. Glad you're making this podcast a part of your anytime, anywhere professional development. Got a nice episode planned for you today. Uh, but first, a couple of announcements. Podcast PD, AJ and I are back. And if you're not subscribed to Podcast PD, what are you doing? Go to podcastpd.com and subscribe. It's a good show. AJ and I have a ton of fun. And the reason I enjoy doing it is because it allows me to talk about stuff other than education technology. We talk about some ed tech stuff there from time to time, but, you know, it's a little bit more than, you know, just technology. I, I, I have other opinions too, you know, and I want you to listen to them. <laughs> uh, but seriously, we just released episode 123 and we're back. We also record that show live every other Sunday out at podcastpd.com slash live. We live stream it on YouTube. And if you can ever make it, and be a part of our live chat, then you're kind of a part of the show. So I invite you to check out Podcast PD. Now, while recording Podcast PD is a virtual experience, you know, we don't have a live studio audience, you know, with us and in front of us, live events are returning. And if you listen to this podcast and you are anywhere in the New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Connecticut area, I've got good news for you. Ed Camp, New Jersey is returning here in the fall of 2022. I am one of the lead organizers of Ed Camp, New Jersey. I've been that for quite some time now, once I got involved way back in probably 2013. Um, the pandemic kind of prevented us from having in-person events, as you are well aware for the last two years. So the last time we had an in-person Ed Camp New Jersey was in November of 2019. And I am very excited to say that we are back November 19th, 2022 at New Brunswick High School, right in central Jersey. We're back. If you'd like more information and you'd like to register and come for free, go to edcampnewjersey.net and the information will be there for you to register. I will also, of course, Include the link to registration in the show notes for this episode, which you can tap or swipe, or if you go to chrisnessy.com slash 210, the link will be there. Speaking of going to the website, we are getting close to the end of the year, right? We are here in the beginning of October, so I've got another October episode, two more in November, and then two episodes in December, which means there are not including this one, there are five episodes left for this calendar year, which means we are coming up on the ninth annual House of EdTech Smackdown. That's right. The 2022 House of EdTech Smackdown is coming your way. It's going to be episode 215, and that's going to come your way on, if I, as, I, as I look at the calendar, would have helped if I had it up. Let's go. It's not October. Uh, it's not November. It is coming your way on October 18th, which means if you want to contribute to this year's House of EdTech Smackdown, 
you need to get me your contribution and submission by Friday, December 9th, 2022. Now, if you're not familiar with the House of EdTech Smackdown, it's the final episode of the year, and that's where I turn the show over to you, and we load it up with what you are loving and using and trying and what you want to recommend that other people do and try with education technology. Go back in the back catalog, check it out, and it's always a fun episode, and I look forward to seeing what you are using and loving in the last year with education technology. So again, that's going to come your way uh, the end of December, but you got to get your submission to me via email. You can send me audio, however you want to share it. You know, you do what you got to do, but just know this. If you send me an email, then you take your chances of the impression of you that I will do on the episode. So it's in your best interest to send me audio of you talking about what you love in education technology here for the year 2022. And I look forward to hearing what you share. All right, that's all the news. Let's talk about this episode's recommendation. All right, got a great Chrome extension for you if you are interested in learning a new language or if your students are in the process of learning a new language, you need to check out the Chrome extension Toucan, and it's T-O-U-C-A-N. And this is a Chrome extension that helps you learn new languages as you browse the internet without the need for flashcards or any type of transition tools. It's honestly, it's quite a genius tool in terms of Chrome extensions and what it does. As you browse the internet, Toucan will automatically translate certain words in the language that you are trying to learn. So let's say most of an article you're reading is in English, but now some words will be in Spanish or French or whatever you set it to. And when you hover over these words, you'll see the transition and the meaning. This way, you can learn new words in the language and the context of how you should use them in sentences. Toucan is free, but it is limited to Spanish, French, German, Portuguese, and Italian. And I will, of course, include a link to Toucan in the show notes, chrisnessy.com slash 210, or in the player you're listening in, tap or swipe, and you'll see a link there as well. But this is pretty cool, and I think I'm going to start to learn Italian. <laughs> That's my recommendation. For this episode's featured content, uh, this topic has come up previously on the show, whether by me or by, you know, various guests that I've had here on the program, but I've never, as far as I can tell, devoted a, an episode to digital equity. Now, it's important. So let's start at the beginning. All right. So what is meant by digital equity? From the website digitalinclusions.org, they say, quote, digital equity is a condition in which all individuals and communities have the information technology capacity needed for full participation in our society, democracy, and economy. Digital equity is necessary for all civic and cultural participation, employment, lifelong learning, and access to essential services. End quote. Digital equity is built on three pillars. Number one is internet access, devices, and digital literacy. But why is digital equity important? Why do we need digital equity? If you're like me, you use the internet on a daily basis. We stream movies, we play games. A lot of us, myself included, we are on high-speed internet connections, and it might seem hard to imagine a world where that's not possible. But this is the reality for many people. And according to the North Carolina 
Department of Information Technology, they've identified the reasons why. Number one is cost. Not everyone can afford to buy high-speed internet service. Number two is access. Not every home in an area is capable of receiving broadband services. I'm looking at the rural areas of our country and obviously rural places around the world. Number three is relevancy. Some people do not see broadband as useful or necessary for their daily lives. And number four, digital literacy. There's a, a large lack of understanding of the benefits of connecting to the internet, which can limit somebody's choices for work or education. And that can have a detriment and cause a lower career potential. Some households may experience more than one of these factors, which makes it difficult to prioritize the internet access that they need. I experience this every day. While my students have Chromebooks, they all don't go home with their Chromebooks to reliable internet service. So while they've got the devices, they don't have the access. And this was a struggle for the community that I work in during the pandemic, because again, we had to do virtual learning and not every student had reliable internet. Now, the local cable internet company tried to help out and provide internet access, but it wasn't a reliable connection. It just wasn't. And that made teaching and more so the learning a lot more challenging. And that's one of the uh, holes or blemishes in education that was really brought to light by the pandemic in the last two years. So what are the benefits of digital equity in education? Well, with digital equity, a school can educate students anytime, anywhere, in real time with the latest tools and resources. And again, something like that goes beyond access. You have communities and schools and students who have the access but not every school and community is provided the same tools, right? Not every school is a Google school or a Microsoft school or has access to web-based tools or the same web-based tools. And that's challenging. Now, I'm not saying we all need to be on the same stuff, but there are a lot of options out there and more should be provided. Right? We need to invest our dollars into the right resources or more resources and programs and apps. Learning isn't limited to synchronous sessions in a time or a place with internet access. Whether we're talking about online learning or building with 3D printers, when we add and effectively integrate technology in an equitable fashion, doors begin to open. But how do we do that? I'm not about to tell you the answer because I don't have it, but it's important that this conversation that is already happening, all right, I am not the first person to talk about this. I am not the last person to talk about this. But if you hadn't thought about it in a while, it's important to bring this back to the front burner. So you might be thinking, how can I promote digital equity in my classroom? Well, I did a little research for you, and here's what I came up with from commonsense.org. Number one, seek first to understand. Recognize your students' current tech capabilities and their concerns. Consider using a survey at the beginning of the year to get a baseline understanding of your students' access to technology. Make sure to let your students know you'll use results to inform your teaching and that their answers will remain confidential from their peers. While you may have strong support with your students, don't assume too much. It doesn't matter how good of a rapport you've built. Something like the survey can help. So it's important to ask questions to understand what technology use is really like in their homes so you have a clearer and more accurate understanding of needs and constraints. Try to learn from your students. How many have computers at home? How many of those computers have access to high-speed internet? 
are there families who use cell phones or tablets to access the internet? Where do students access the internet if they can't do it at home? Number two, try it out. It may seem obvious, but before giving assignments on a new platform or app, try it yourself. And I've talked about that before. A lot of times, things we'd never assume could go wrong actually do. But trying out the experience beforehand, just as your students will, that can help us catch some bugs before we turn students loose. And it gives us some valuable insight into what students will experience in our classes. From there, you can give kids ample time to complete their work and maybe even offer some pro tips in the process. Everything from login problems to having the right browser can affect how long it takes for students to get work done. I've always said that one of the most challenging things that I do in my classes, and I tell my students this all the time, is to try to teach them how to use something all at the same time. Because you've got your fast clickers, you've got your slow clickers, and you've got the kids who just aren't paying attention. So to try to teach them how to use technology certainly has its challenges. <laughs> Number three, create a tech equity vision with your students. What exactly is a tech equity vision? It's a fancy way to describe the act of involving your students in the conversations about how tech use happens in your classroom and beyond it. What better way to elevate student voices and partner with students on how to use technology for teaching and learning? Ask questions like, what do we use technology in the classroom for? How do we want technology to help us learn? What are some challenges you face using technology in and out of school? And what does technology actually enhance when we learn? And when does it get in the way? Document and post the responses on Tech Equity Vision so students feel and see accountability and ownership. Number four, reconsider your homework policies. Hello, Matt Miller. <laughs> One student on the panel shared that their teacher had an absolutely no late work policy. And when they couldn't turn in an online assignment due to lack of access at home, the student simply received a zero on the assignment. Another student shared that their teacher gave a week between assigning online homework and turning it in, which allowed for more flexibility to find access to a network. Consistency between classes can really help kids too. So if you're working as part of a team, collaborate with your colleagues on creating consistent policies around homework and digital assignments. Don't be afraid to rethink how your team handles digital learning and be mindful of the constraints that students may face how they access technology. But I'll say, and again, hello, Matt Miller, don't give homework. Just don't. I, I, I've been teaching more than a decade, and I would say after the first three or four years, I got done with homework. There's really no need. There's no sense in having kids do things at home. So get it done in class. Even the math teachers. Why do we need to do 50 more problems at home? I don't want to go off on that tangent. But again, these are four ways that you can promote digital equity in your classroom. So to recap, number one, understand your kids and where they're coming from. Number two, try out technology before you set it in front of your kids. Number three, create a tech equity vision with the kids. And four, reconsider those homework policies. And again, you don't need to give homework. It's okay. <laughs> now, again, not the first person to talk about digital equity. I'm not the last. And this is not the first time it's going to come up here on the House of Ed Tech. But I really want to know what you're doing and what you're thinking around digital equity in education. And I want to hear your stories. And maybe that's a great way that you can get yourself on the Just Give It a Try segment, which is where I turn the show over to you each and every time to talk about what's working and not working in your classroom. So consider this my official request for your digital equity stories. What's working, what's not working. Send me an email, feedback 
at chrisnessy.com or go to chrisnessy.com, leave me a voicemail, and we will take it from there. But I want to know what's working, and you'll help me, and we'll all help each other. Thank you for listening to this episode of the House of EdTech podcast. If you're not subscribed or following, I hope that you'll continue to make this podcast a part of your anytime, anywhere professional development. Again, I want to know what you're thinking and what you're doing around digital equity. So hit up the show notes, chrisnessy.com slash 210 or chrisnessy.com slash feedback or chrisnessy.com slash voicemail. Just go to chrisnessy.com <laughs> and then let me know what your thoughts on digital equity are. If you enjoy the House of EdTech podcast, best thing you can do, tell somebody else about the show. Whether they're in the classroom next to you, across the hall, your best friends on Twitter or Instagram, share the show. Word of mouth is the best way to share a podcast you love and even one that maybe you just like. <laughs> you can also become an awesome supporter. I am very thankful for the ongoing giving back to the show by the following people. That includes Catherine Abdallah, Brian Carpenter, Aaron Cummings, Dan Gallagher, Peggy George, Jeff Herb, Mike Messner, Matt Miller, JP Prezavento, Patty Reefus, Lori Simpson, and Kyle Wilcox. If you're listening to this show episode after episode and you're getting value and you want to give back, just go to chrisnessy.com slash awesome and all the instructions are there. And in advance, I appreciate that. The next episode of the podcast is going to be episode 211 and that's going to come your way on October 23rd, 2022. And again, here before I say goodbye, I want to remind you that the ninth annual House of EdTech Smackdown is coming. So get me your thoughts. What have you loved? What have you tried? What worked? What didn't work? What is your absolute go-to favorite EdTech tool tip recommendation here for the year 2022? I will assemble them. Just get it to me by Friday, December 9th. 2022. And I look forward to putting that episode together and releasing it on December 18th. Also, go to edcampnewjersey.net and New Jersey is spelled out. There's a link in the show notes. Would love to see you at Ed Camp New Jersey 2022 if you are close enough. Or even if you want to fly to New Jersey, let's go. Come on down. Until next time, thank you for learning with me. And remember, using technology isn't difficult. Just give it a try. Thank you.